Welcome to the top 10 decks for March 2024. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. Now, I'm going to mention Rogue here to start. Now, you're going to be like, but Robbie, you didn't mention. Yeah, I haven't even gone through the deck yet. I'm going to mention, because I'm not going to make a Rogue video for this right now, because I have a feeling we're like in a danger ban list phase right now. So, the first thing I want to say here is you don't have to play these top 10 decks in order to do well. You have other options like Lab, Unchained. But if you're expecting for your win rate to be exceptionally well, playing into fire meta right now, it is not going to happen. I'm just being very realistic with you. Like I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but the turnover rate is not very good right now for Rogue. All right, like it was seeing a top ten is a little bit challenging right now. But just because a deck didn't make this list doesn't mean that it's not a challenger. For the meta, you've got 12, 13, 14 decks right now that I think can do well, but okay. Now, starting things off here, tier elements. I wanted to put tier in Rogue. I still think that this deck has dropped down exponentially, but my comment section keeps telling me and going, Robbie, no, tier's still relevant. I mean, it's relevant, but like, you have to understand, like, there's a difference between being like really good and like, being like rogue, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm sorry to, to tell you this, but like your first couple of decks here are like very rogue now. Like the meta is not being very kind to these challengers. Though, I mean, tier can still make a board, it can still do things, it can still high roll into fire. Like, it's not that tier has any bad matchups per se, except for like dimensional fissure, you know, dot deck. But the thing is, like, the deck plays relatively well into certain decks. Well, as long as it gets a good high roll. Yeah, that's it. Just high roll your matchups. I love variants, don't you? Next up is Mana DM. In a format where there are 15 to 18 hand traps in every single deck out here, um, it's not that Mana DM is doing terrible out here. It's just ending on probably one of the more generic boards. I mean, and it also can't really play into a fire board going first. Yeah, who would have guessed that, right? Like, but it, it's still, in my personal opinion, it's still one of the best combo decks in the room. It's just if it plays into every single fire matchup that it possibly can see out here, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have fun as we're going to say so if you're a man a dm player and you're you're enjoying the the combo crazy lines of the meta you you can do well i like that's that's the thing like you can still i don't see a reason as to why you know things can't line up in your favor and you can't have a good day I, this top 10 is so boring and i purely oh boy the cat in the hat deck yeah i too love uh playing purely into fire, and then fire just demolishes the big cat. Like, the problem with purely right now is it it is it is not a consistent deck. Like, if you're looking at purely, you're like, oh, man, I can't wait to play purely. It is not consistent at all. It has lost a lot of its steam. It is, uh, it's a little bit rough out here if you're a purely main. And I, I think that's fine, um, but the deck still has some relatively interesting things going for it, um, I will say. You know, big unaffected towers monster followed up with what's it called. Um, you're probably going to beat Rogue probably pretty consistently right now. And I think that's a good thing. As long as you have a good matchup, no problem, right? You just play on into your best matchup. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Variants. Next up is Centurion. Somebody's going to be like, nope, there's no way, I'm out. Well, here, here's the thing. Centurion is kind of doing a little bit better than a lot of these other picks right now. Because King Calamity is an ignorant Yu-Gi-Oh card. I, 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 what, what do you want me to tell you? you? It's fair that this deck has King Calamity? Is it fair that fire is tier zero? Apples to oranges, you know? What one problem card deal with another problem card, all right? Like, that's just how it is. You played 18 hand traps in your deck and you didn't open the out to stop the King Calamity? Just get good. That's the Centurion experience right now, in my personal opinion. Like, the deck just steamrolls through you if it hits the high roll. It's a lot of this right now. It's a lot of, 
It's a lot of consistency, a lot of unchecked, and it's a lot of, oops, you didn't do anything. Guess I'll just be better than you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a thing for Centurion. Next up is Cash Tira. Um, Cash is still the best mid-range control deck that you want to see right now in discussion. Um, Fenrir, Unicorn literally are checking a lot of the rogue decks out here, but then they're getting bopped on by fire. I'm, I'm also not to say that Cash Tira has an unwinnable matchup into fire. No, 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 no. They open first. They can probably do some little control options. It also depends how well fire opens to kind of gas this deck out and put it into a terrible position. But realistically, I think that you, you do have a chance to do relatively okay playing Cash Hero right now. I mean, you just got to know what you're doing, especially on a localized level. You can be a menace with tier or uh, with cash Tira. Well, with tier as well, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. So mid range control options, side the dimensional fissures. Uh, you'll probably do all right personally um, for all of this. Next up is branded. This deck, uh, this community still seems to think that this deck has a good matchup playing into fire right now. I'm not to say that it doesn't. Because it is doing relatively strongly, um, at least on that front. But my, my only issue with Branded right now is it feels not very strong. And that's kind of my problem. Um, I don't know. Branded, it's, it doesn't feel like it got better. It's just uh, the things it had to deal with in the Rogue category have kind of gone away. Which inherently makes its matchups better. So if it has to focus on a narrower window of things to check, and the deck kind of evolves along with that. Um, I think that's honestly been probably the reason why Branded has been holding on and doing so well out here on the top end of things. So something to kind of keep in mind with that. Um, but Branded, still very, very, very strong per se. Next up is Flanderies. Ah, boy. You know, I've I feel like I've said this every single one of these videos, but... M-Pen's a good card, forcing your opponent into defense mode in order to combo off. And they did an entire combo with everything in defense mode. All right, well, good stuff. Um, Featherstorm is another ignorant Yu-Gi-Oh card, man. Featherstorm, blinking a turn, King Calamity, you know, blinking a turn. The only difference here for Flu is, uh, you know, they don't have to just have to have a Winged Beast on the field in the free turn skip. All right, mission accomplished, and then you bird up on the next turn. All right, it the deck can do what it needs to do. It just... One more broken card! Yay! Two of these decks have very broken cards. I love this game. Floodgates, yeah! Yeah, that's... <laughs> Am I wrong, though? Like, realistically, like, Floodgates are the only reason why these Centurion and this are doing well right now. Like, excellent! Next up is Voiceless Voice. You know, after YCS Vegas, it's very hard for me to want to put Voiceless Voice as the third best deck, but it's got data backing itself up right now as this. But man, oh man, some people have no idea how to play this deck, and it is it is horrible. All right. I, I have no problem with Voiceless Voice players wanting to play this deck, but like, it's very hard for me to believe that this is the third best deck with how bad people either brick with the deck or how bad they play with the deck. All right. I'm just tossing that out there but enough people have been playing this that the variance has actually turned the deck over very very well and that's a good thing all right like I'm, I'm glad to see that voiceless voice is still doing well here all right like that's the thing that you want to see so hey you know the lowe's price i guess is now justified I have the plus $70 price tag because it's the third best deck in the room, right? Snake Eyes and Fire Kings up here where I do not classify the Fire King version and the Snake Eyes version as the same deck as much as people want me to, but um, they are still separate decks by the seven cards that they do choose to play. And the Fire King variant is doing its thing. If you're looking at this format, yeah, it's a tier zero Snake Eyes format. Woo! Everything that you kind of come to know and love about this format. This format is pick your challenger for fire. Did you need me to tell you that fire is the best deck in the room? No! No, you didn't. You needed me to tell you which decks have an okay fire matchup while everything in the back of this video is spontaneously on fire. Because that is the format, ladies and gentlemen. Are you guys expecting some more rogue options? 
they don't exist. You you can play rogue, you can do well on your locals, but you're probably going to go X1 because your local Snake Eyes and Fire King player is going to blow you out. That's just how it works. You guys have a good rest of your day, right? Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.